Why couldn't the family leave the room after playing with Legos? They were blocked. Today, I'm going to recap a 2005 action comedy film called The Pacifier. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. A Navy SEALs team is informed about an upcoming mission to rescue Dr. Howard Plummer, who has been kidnapped by a group of Serbian rebels. After getting the instruction, they attack the enemies and Lieutenant Shane Wolf manages to get Howard free. As they come out, he shows a picture of his kids and introduces them to him, but he does not show any kind of excitement and ask him to move forward. Before they can continue their journey, Shane gets injured and the professor loses his life in the counterattack. Two months later, Shane recovers from his injuries and his commander Bill Fawcett tells him about a new mission. He intends to gather up his team, but Bill stops him by saying it's a top-secret mission and he can't let anyone else know about it. While getting ready for the mission, Shane recalls Bill telling him that a safety deposit box with the professor's name has been found in Zurich. As the rest of the team, along with the professor's widow, intends to go in search of the box, he is asked to stay at the professor's house in Bethesda to protect his kids from the enemy and search for the secret project, the ghost. Shane gets there and is welcomed by the professor's widow, Julie. She introduces her kids Kate, Zoe, Seth, and Peter to him and tells them that he is going to be protecting them while she is gone. Shane gets a little confused to see four children, but soon realizes they are actually five as the nanny introduces another one, Tyler. After having an initial discussion with Julie about the kids, he gets to his duty and sets up the security systems around the house. Julie says goodbye to her children and leaves for Zurich, but not before instructing them to follow his commands. She gets worried about leaving the kids alone, but Shane and Nanny assure her to take care of them in her absence. He gets back to work, but hears one of the kids screaming and rushes over to the living area, just to find out everyone going on with their daily routine. He gets angry with their careless attitude and asks them to be disciplined, but they don't seem to care at all. At night, he spots someone outside and catches a guy named Scott, but before he can ask anything, Zoe comes outside revealing that it's her boyfriend Scott. A neighboring Korean couple, Mr. and Mrs. Chun, get angry with the buzzing alarms at the house and scold him for disturbing their peace of mind, but he apologizes to them and assures them it won't happen again. Zoe asks him to let Scott inside the house, but he asks him to do push-ups instead. She gets angry with him, thinking Scott might break up with her just because of him. He asks her to tell her mother about it as she was worried about them, but she does not agree with him and keeps on yelling for ruining her weekend plans. After realizing that they don't pay attention to his instructions, Shane decides to teach them some discipline and train them. The next morning, he forcibly wakes them up at 6 and starts instructing gathering them up at the dining table and forces them to wear special security bands. Soon he finds out Seth is missing from the meeting and furiously breaks his room door to get him out, but he appears from the bathroom and starts yelling at him for breaking the door. After seeing this, Zoe and Seth plan to get rid of him and spill some oil on the stairs, but poor Nanny becomes a victim. Meanwhile, Julie and the team arrive in Zurich and find the box, but fail to provide the password to get their hands on it. After falling through the stairs, Nanny decides to quit, but he does not want her to go as he cannot take care of the children alone. As he fights with her to keep her away from the door, Julie calls him telling him she might need to stay for a few more days. He tries his best, but she bites him and runs out of the house, leaving him at the mercy of the kids. He informs them about their mother's prolonged stay, but they start telling him about their problems. His misery starts as he is forced to take care of Tyler, while Kate keeps on annoying him with her silly questions. The next morning, he orders a meal for the kids, but the breakfast is destroyed as Tyler gets scared of Kate's eye-crossing stunt, and Peter turns the table upside down. Meanwhile, he receives a call from Zoe and Seth's school, and is asked to meet their vice principal. After listening to the call, Shane packs up and gets ready for school by taking all of them with him in a minivan. He manages to get to the school right in time, and introduces him to the vice principal, Dwayne Murney, but he starts scolding the kids for missing their classes. He continues his bragging but is interrupted by Principal Claire, who sends him outside to look over the school. She sends the kids to the classes and tells him that Julie has already explained to her about the situation, 
She also grants him permission to stay at school and look after the kids. He saves Seth from the bullies, but Duane says he needs to learn to defend himself. As the vice principal teases Seth, Shane tries to get him out of the situation, but he refuses to take his help. Claire comes over and tries to talk to him, but he receives an emergency alert and leaves in a hurry. He follows the signal, but only to find out the kids have discarded their wristbands into the underground sewerage. He comes back to the house in a miserable condition and shows the note to the kids, but does not say anything this time because of Claire. After getting a shower, Shane comes back, but sees many kids at the dining table who start making fun of him. Kate tells him they come over every week and will be staying there until 8 p.m. He unwillingly agrees to let them stay, but asks them to follow his instructions. At school, Kate is bullied by some boys, but he assures her to protect her. After finally coming back to the house, Shane finds Zoe and her friends partying and asks them to stop immediately. They start rushing out of the house, but he forces them to clean the space and make it spotless like it was earlier. While making them clean it under his supervision, he finds a CD with ghost written on it and hides it in his pocket. Zoe argues with him again and asks him to leave them alone, but before they can say anything else, the house is attacked by someone and he instructs the kids to lock themselves up in a room. He fights against them and forces them to leave the house. After getting rid of them, he comes back to the room informing kids about their safety, and they rush to him for protection, asking him not to leave them alone. Upon Seth's questions, he informs them they are after the CD, but he assures them he won't let them get it. Kids finally accept him in the house and agree to listen to him. He is again called at the school, where the principal tells him that Seth has dyed his hair and missed his wrestling practice for over a month. Claire tells him there's been some sort of psychological problem with Seth and Zoe, so she asks him to talk to them and find it out. After coming back from school, he asks Seth about wrestling but he tells him it's not what he wants, and he is just doing it because his father wanted him to do it. Shane goes to Seth's room to talk to him, but finds out he ran away, so he starts chasing him after, advising Zoe to take care of the kids. He follows Seth and ends up in a local theater, finding out he has been rehearsing for a play, but the director leaves the set after being unsatisfied by their performances. He comes over to Seth, who thinks he won't understand his passion but he assures him to be his support and let him do whatever he wants. Upon Seth's concerns about the director, Shane agrees to take charge and direct the musical for him. He starts getting closer with the kids, reads bedtime stories to them, and even dances to put Peter to sleep like his father used to do. The next day, he encourages Zoe to drive the minivan after knowing she always wanted to do it. At school, he urges Seth to stand up against Duane and inform him about quitting wrestling to work in a musical play. He gets angry with him for giving up on wrestling, but Shane agrees to wrestle with him. The fight starts, but he kicks him down in no time, which proves to be the final step in winning the kid's trust, and they all start paying attention to his instructions. He teaches Zoe to drive, helps Seth in his acting, and trains Kate and her friends while taking care of Tyler. As he dances for Peter at night, he thanks him and calls him Daddy, showing his affection for Shane. Kate and her friends are bullied again, but this time, they fight against the boys and knock them down, by using the tactics learned from him. Julie finally figures out the password Angel, which is written on her ring. They succeed in getting the box from the officials and find out a two-prong key inside. Back at the house, Shane spots Zoe sitting alone in her room and tries to talk to her. She does not say anything at first, but later opens up about missing her father and shares her feelings with him. After some time, he receives a call from Julie and tells the kids that she will be back home soon. They all get overwhelmed to hear the news and start planning a welcome home party for her, while he observes them finally getting back to normal life. The same day, he discovers an underground vault in the garage and calls his office, telling him it requires a two-pronged key to unlock. Julie finally arrives back at the house where the kids welcome her with a surprise party. Shane takes Bill to the garage, but before they can open the vault, they are attacked by someone, and he recognizes them as Mr. and Mrs. Chun, the neighbors, but to his surprise, Bill joins them as well. They tie the kids and Julie up in the house where Bill reveals he works for North Korea. They take Julie with them and open the vault but cannot move forward due to the specialized security system. 
Just after some time, the kids free themselves and wake Shane who asks them to get help from the police while he starts looking for their mother. They leave in the minivan while Mr. Chun starts chasing them in Bill's car. Shane arrives to help Julie and figures out that Peter's dance is the key to getting inside and finally opens the lock after fighting against Bill and Chun. Kids lure the police to the house after passing outside the school, but Mr. Chun arrives and points a gun at them, asking them to hand over the ghost. Shane distracts him by asking the pet duck Jerry to attack him, while Claire manages to take him down. He thanks her for helping him out, but Kate interrupts them. She gives a photo of the siblings to him, so he never forgets them and expresses her love for him. They all attend Seth's musical play, where the vice principal Duane also performs as a nun. Shane tells Claire about his retirement from the Navy and joining the school as a wrestling coach. He congratulates Seth on his performances. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy, hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the full movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more video like this.